Welcome to this webinar delivered by Stork. My name is Ferry Visser, manager of Stork's Asset Management Technology Group, and I am your moderator during this webinar. Thank you for taking the time to dial in. We live in interesting times, making us all re-evaluate choices we make in our daily lives. So all the more, thanks for choosing to join this call. From our side, we are happy to share our knowledge with you. Hopefully, it can help you navigate the current crisis situation. Of course, due to this crisis, we work from home, hence the possibly less business background behind the speakers of today. The duration of this webinar is half an hour. To avoid static background noises, we have switched off all microphones. However, we do greatly appreciate your questions. So if you have questions, please enter them during the presentation via the Q&A button at the end of your screen. And we will try to address them at the end of the presentation. The subject of today is remote collaboration, a very applicable topic with COVID-19 raging around the globe. Do note that this session is only about synchronous remote collaboration. There's also asynchronous remote collaboration, where people make use of email, forums, and all kinds of sharing platforms, but that's not the topic of this webinar. As mentioned in the invite, we found it interesting to see that many of us are quite first with using streaming video tools like FaceTime, Skype, and WhatsApp video when communicating with friends and family. And we look at office personnel. They are pretty proficient using Skype for Business, WebEx, Zoom, and the like at talking with other residents residing in nice offices with good Wi-Fi. But unfortunately, we still see quite a lot of antique tools being used by technicians at site. And it's quite often a challenge to introduce more modern systems there. Now, luckily, this isn't the case on all sides. So the challenge we want to address today is how can we connect technicians at sites, enhancing safety, reducing costs, executing faster, improving quality, and with COVID-19, giving us the flexibility to continue to execute, execute despite travel bans. Stock's Global Innovation Director, Martin Glas, will share several different use cases that we have implemented within Stork. Some you might be applying also within your company, while some might stretch your mind a little and hopefully inspire you to try it out as well. I wish you an educational half hour. My time, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ferry. Thank you very much. Um, I'll indeed be sharing several use cases and just to give the audience some context from which angle I'm coming. First, a quick slide on uh, Stork. Um, Stork is a, a fully integrated O&M turnaround modification and asset integrity solution company. And despite that, we, we don't own assets, but we absolutely have a passion to keep them running at peak performances at all uh, phases of the asset life cycle. This is a graphic we typically use uh, to depict how we deliver our services. Uh, most of our people are here in the bottom part. Uh, these are people working day and night at the client facility, keeping that facility up and running or performing turnarounds and hopefully getting it up and running as fast as possible again. But we also have our bricks and mortar, our own bricks and mortar. Uh, this is where we locate all our specialists. This is where we locate our planners who are planning months in advance of turnarounds to make certain that everything is set in place correctly. And this is also where we have our workshops for example, to repair pumps or turbines and valves and the like. And these facilities are typically located in industrial dense zones. And lastly, we have something we call Stork in the Cloud. This very much refers to our global experts who are available to support projects anywhere in the world. And also refers to our online knowledge base filled with innovations that can be accessed irrespective of time zone and irrespective of location. The key focus today is about that technician, that technician who's out there in the field and how are we helping him? And how are we helping him connect with those other layers to really make it a seamless experience for the client, whether we are functioning in the bottom layer 
or in the other two layers. And I hope that you can be inspired again, like Ferry said, about how that can be done because there's so many ways that we can do it. Now for every use case that I'll be presenting, I will be using, referring back to this graph and I'll be doing that in the top right-hand corner. You can see there a little bit, the technician, and he could be working with somebody very close. There'll be a dot in the green face and then somebody outside the client fence and somebody around the world, just to give you a little idea of where there's the collaboration taking place. Now, before I go into the cases, uh, let's get this tool thing out of uh, the way. Uh, this is uh, something that often encumbers the discussion. It's it needlessly, a uh, tool is just a tool. So let's just quickly go through a few of the tools that are at our disposals to make collaboration work. First, we have something that we call the basic set, the 1.0. This is the traditional portaphone, uh, which allows excellent voice-only communication. Think here of Motorola, Kenwood, and other brands out there. Next leg up is the hands-free version. This is where everything is neatly integrated into the headset itself. 3M has a nice range, but lots of other providers are there too. Distinctly different is when you start to add video. In this case, 2.0 has one-way video allowing us to transmit images to somebody else in the world. Martijn, may I interrupt yes. for a moment? Absolutely. Because I understand that your video is still not on and people like to see you. Could you switch, <laughs> switch your video on yourself? Let's see how that works technology-wise. Can you see me in this way? It's in the lower left corner of your screen. It should be... Uh... So... If all goes well, I am, uh, I've got my video on, I should be visible. Okay, well, if that's the case, I got a message that it appeared not to be the situation, okay. but- As long as you can I see the slides those. and hear my voice, I think we're in good shape. Yeah, it works now. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah. So, Continue your story. All right, so I was here with 2.0, but it's a distinct leg up if we go to 3.0. This is where you add data. So think here of uh, smart uh, phones, uh, tablets at sight, uh, and also a new software. This is where software becomes important. This could be WebEx, Zoom, LibreStream, and X rating, uh, making things intrinsically safe also comes to play here. Typically adding some cost, but you certainly get a lot more functionality as well. And the last one, a leg up again, is a 3.5, and this is the hands-free version. And this is where the smart glasses like RealWear, Microsoft HoloLens, Daiquiri, and the like all come to play. And all of these uh, smart glasses have some nifty way to allow two-way communication uh, of, and, uh, of the video and of data. So again, different tools, different use cases. And it's not about the tool, but it's finding the right use case, the right tool for the right use case. So here we go with the first one. And the first one I'd like to just talk to you about is a remote supervisor. Every time a technician has completed a job, it needs to be signed off by somebody or some last check has to be done. And often quite a number of people have to be there, including the client, and they all want to participate. However, in our experience is that um, these people aren't hanging around for a technician to finish their work. These people are in high demand and are somewhere in the plant. So it takes quite some idle time from the technician and a lot of walking around by those involved to get everybody to crowd around and to do that final sign off. So many of our teams have really integrated tablets into their work process, allowing multiple people to quickly dial in when the technician has finished his or her job. And even with the uh, COVID-19, uh, this has a lot of benefits, but even before that, you know, the lot less walking time, uh, the expediting, the endless, yeah, walking around. And also because multiple stakeholders can be involved, the quality of decision-making can also increase. And lastly, because there are less people walking at site, there's less chance of congestion and all the possible safety uh, issues related to that. Now, in this case, we use tablets, uh, but for the same amount, you could be working with the ruggedized smartphones or of course the realware but the remote supervisor, often we see that being done by people who have a tablet because they also need the tablet for other data, for example, for work instructions. So then the tablet becomes a logical choice. Moving to the next use case, remote commissioning. 
Uh, we currently have a project going on in uh, Kentucky, USA, and they're there to commission a uh, very large, I think 6,000 horsepower drive. And uh, due to COVID-19, uh, special inspectors from abroad weren't allowed to fly anymore. And a few others have been quarantined in their hotel nearby. So this was really getting to the point that it would uh, impact the, the delivery of the final product uh, project. However, there was an elegant solution at hand. There were several Stark technicians who were there. They're doing maintenance anyway. They're helping with the small modifications and they're at site. And they, in this case, supplied realware. And this allowed them to be the hands and local eyes for the experts who are sitting either abroad or in the hotel. And this allowed the commissioning work to continue. And maybe the quality of the decisions was even went up because the multiple people, including the client, could be involved in the commissioning without over congesting the construction site. And again, this time we used the, the realware, but we could have also used other uh, tools out there. Next one, the classic remote expert, or sometimes referred to as the remote mentor. Quite often, when our technicians are out in the field, they're confronted with situations that they haven't encountered before. Getting specialists to come over just simply takes time. And that speci the specialist who's closest by isn't necessarily the best one. So here we see, uh, hang on a second. Here we see uh, uh, lots of application for collaborative tools to help bolster the confidence of our frontline te technicians, allowing them to work safely and do things first time right. Little thing here, what we found is that often people like the specialist to look on for a long time. And we've found that this little gorilla pod from Joby is actually quite a nifty and you can just position the camera in one way and let the supervisor, or in this case, the mentor, look on, are you doing things correctly? Next case, and immediately a little disclaimer here. Uh, this is something that we're only testing at the moment. So we haven't applied it in a live facility yet. And also <laughs> we don't envision ever replacing the mandatory safety watches and the like. So we are expressly calling this the extra pair of safety eyes. And what's the case here? Well, this little device here on the top of this guy's helmet is actually a 360 camera. And by streaming the 360 images to a person who's sitting safely on a swivel chair somewhere else, this person could look in any direction necessary. So he can also look behind the person who's walking. He can look at what the guy's doing with his hands. He can look up and he can look for dangers that others might not be spotting. So we believe this has definite uh, promise. So we're testing it at uh, two sites at the moment, uh, making use of the Insta360 X1, 1X, sorry. Uh, however, we're noticing that bandwidth still is very much an issue. So uh, who knows? Hopefully 5G will help us uh, solve this one as we move forward. Staying on the safety theme, uh, we regularly apply uh, drones when we want to get an extra vantage point to see what's going on, or for example, to do flare tip inspections. But to date, that supervisor would have to be next to the drone pilot. And that could be a very cold environment and it could involve extra travel. All things, if you can avoid it happening, would be kind of cool, right? So we've recently managed to hook up uh, the console that the pilot's using with WebEx. And now all of a sudden, the person in this case here, you can see Pete Robar, our uh, specialist in, uh, in Canada. He's uh, videoing himself here. And this is uh, other people just watching on and can help make better decisions uh, at site or up high, making use of drones, but then very importantly, connecting it with WebEx. Moving on to another use case, telemedicine. Stark has uh, had access to remote medical support for quite some time, but with this whole COVID raging uh, the, uh, around the world, this has definitely got another impulse. In many places, we are taking uh, all the me and mechanical uh, medical sorry, examinations now remotely. Uh, this is, of course, much safer and actually very cost effective too. And of course, if there's some ailment, again, we can get that uh, medical supervisor to be right there and avoid the travel time of either the doctor or of the person who needs the first aid. And we can all do this very effectively. So telemedicine is really, we've just noticed in the few months, last few months, it's, it's tripled in usage. Now, while talking about the health of people, let's move to the health of, uh, health of assets. 
our whole inspection. Uh, last week we had an interesting case. Uh, this is the picture we, uh, that was taken. This is uh, some of the external hydraulic controls related to a four megawatt turbine. And uh, there was a malfunction. And we knew uh, for certain that we'd need two uh, mechanical engineers to go over there and open certain parts up around the gears and uh, the bearings. But we also needed an inspector and we couldn't scramble this person to site effectively. So what we did is we uh, uh, had the real wear again on and the two uh, technicians, mechanical technicians could do their work, open up the parts, and then also perform some very interesting uh, hydraulic tests that really allowed the inspector to, uh, to assess the situation and to uh, recommend the right course of action to get that turbine back up and running again. Next case, remote note taker. <laughs> Technicians often have to write a lot of reports. I think we're aware of that. But often their PPEs, their personal protection equipment inhibits the effective writing at site. Uh, there are all kinds of promises out there like the voice to text. But in our experience, there's often too much noise at site for these applications to really work well. And also local accents and technical terms, they aren't yet picked up as well by the computer. Again, certainly not with noise going on. And this greatly irritates the technicians if they have to repeat something two, three, four, five times and it still isn't transcribed correctly. But um, as a result, what we noticed was that technicians were postponing the writing of their reports until they got back to the office. But we all know how quickly we forget details. So the reports weren't always to the level that we would want them to have. So one of the creative solutions that uh, our technicians are taking is uh, to take, for example, realware. When you're hanging on a rope, you don't want tablets and uh, smartphones hanging there, dropped objects, uh, hazard. But the realware is hands-free and allows them to dial in with a technician. A technician typically speaks the same dialect, Scottish dialect or whatever. And uh, also this person is much more patient and can really understand if you're reading a tag number out and can patiently ask things in a little bit more kind way than a computer typically does. So again, the remote note taker, you can also immediately put the information into the right place in the database with the right photos is greatly enhancing the quality of reports and the turnaround of reports. So it sounds simple and it is simple, if you think about it and set up the infrastructure to do this kind of stuff. Another tough environment that we often work in is confined space. Uh, take for example, uh, teams of people working on a full breathing apparatus uh, to clean out a tank. Uh, in this case, you don't want any loose hanging radio devices uh, that you can see here, one of these things on his breast, then wires uh, of push to talk devices, headsets and all the like. Uh, the solution here is to provide them with fully integrated headsets with microphones. And in this case, throat mics. It's very simple and extremely effective. We've noticed that uh, it increases productivity tremendously. If people can collaborate in a hazardous environment with each other and feel confident, feel safe because they know they can communicate each other, with each other. Together with a few other innovations, we've managed to reduce size by half and still execute the job twice as fast, simply because people feel safe. Another interesting environment is uh, working at large manufacturing uh, spaces. These are typically very quiet places, but in an instant, the HVAC can go off or somebody can maybe start up a jackhammer and uh, it can become a deafening place. And the challenge is to get people to keep their hair protection in place when it's so quiet 95% of the time. Technicians will lament that it's stopping them from collaborating because they have to shout at each other to be heard. So typically these phone things are not put in and that of course is a risk, a safety, a, a, a hearing a, a risk if there's all of a sudden loud noise. Anyway, we found a very interesting solution in the hunting scene. Uh, these are earplugs uh, actually amplify very faint uh, noises when it's quiet. But when a gun goes off, it instantly becomes noise canceling. And this is exactly the characteristics we want in our buildings. Make normal communication possible when it's quiet, but get complete noise cancellation when the HVAC or jackhammer goes off. Small investment, huge returns. 
Moving to the last case, <laughs> this is not something uh, related to technicians, it's a uh, third party inspection. And I just I felt we'd be remiss if I didn't mention this. Uh, for not, those not familiar with third party inspection or TPI in short, this is where the uh, EPC contractor wants to uh, have a third party uh, inspection of equipment at a manufacturing site before it gets shipped to site. Traditionally, historical uh, source inspectors who live close to site to physically travel to that site manufacturing site and to witness, for example, fat tests, factory acceptance tests, check documentations and certifications, and measure uh, to verify measurements and the like. Especially with COVID, we have seen a big uptake in our offer to just connect digitally with the OEM manufacturing facility. This has, of course, a lot of benefit. It cuts back uh, costs because we don't need to travel as much. And we can also select the best inspector that we have to do each inspection. Also, this approach really allows last minute inspections to take place because quite often things are forgotten or the client wants an additional inspection to happen. And again, just with the digital, this can happen so much more effectively. Well, hopefully this has given you an impression of how we apply remote collaboration at Stork. Uh, just to give you a quick recap, we've just talked about the third party inspection, very applicable during construction. We've also talked about that extra set of eyes in the sky for heavy lifts and things like that with the, with the drone. We talked about remote commissioning, as was the case uh, recently in Kentucky. It proved really is worth, but also telemedicine, and that doesn't really matter which phase. Temporary noise, during normal operation and maintenance, remote inspection whenever it's required, if there's uh, some troubleshooting is required, remote experts and mentor applied a lot just to enhance that uh, uh, confidence, remote supervision to sign off on things and to get that turnaround done as quickly as possible. And also that streaming of 360 video. Again, it's got the star behind there, but we really think this is promising support working at heights, especially when it gets to uh, relocation and decommissioning, uh, working at heights on ropes, working in confined spaces. So actually all these things, you can have a whole remote collaboration is so applicable during all phases of the life cycle. Now let's take a quick look at the benefits. Um, every application is unique, but we definitely see some common benefits just to list a few. Uh, we have uh, uh, enhanced safety, you know, even with, uh, um, uh, sorry, <laughs> with the less people at site, uh, if you need multiple experts to come there, it's so cheaply done. And just to bolster that confidence and not to over congest the site, it is just invaluable. Also that increased flexibility to deliver, even just we have the, the COVID-19 uh, travel bans in place, we can still continue without losing quality. The faster response time, you don't have to walk around to uh, get people involved. Enhanced quality and decision-making, apart from being able to dial any expert, our technicians in the field can be so much more confident when they're doing their work and also safer. Reduce cost. Yes, there is a cost for hardware and software, but it's typically offset by eliminate travel costs, first time right execution, schedule gains, and those things. And lastly, also let's not forget sustainability. We can use more local content very confident, uh, confidently, and of course, no travel. Now, one of the questions I get is, you know, which hardware and software do we use? As well as you shared, uh, there are lots of categories out there. And uh, again, this doesn't even mention the earbuds or the 360 things that we are uh, looking at, uh, but which to choose depends on several things. Uh, for example, the type of work you're doing. Is voice enough? Video, do you need data for also maybe other things? Criticality of your work, the first time right, how important is that? PPEs, is, hand, is working with uh, hands-free very important to you? How often is it used? Connectivity, well, this is great, of course, but if there's no connectivity, it doesn't work. Uh, so what are your surroundings? Uh, uh, how strong is the Wi-Fi? Uh, these things need to be checked before you go out there. Does it need to be uh, explosion-proof, intrinsically safe? The noise level, what level of noise cancellation do you need? And can you even talk with each other because of the noise? And finally, of course, there's always a cost to help determine which tool you eventually will be using. Now I can imagine 
just as a final takeaway that, uh, you know, with all these benefits being so evident and the tools out there, why don't we see this happen even more than we currently are? Well, let's just take a look at who's all involved here. First of all, we have two people who need to be able to collaborate. They need to know who they can reach out to. Well, who are the experts? So, and Stork spent quite some time in identifying experts and making these people aware uh, that they are the expert, that they can be called, and that they need to respond. And also, of course, the person who needs help, that he knows who to reach out to. And they really, this is a cultural thing. They need to want to collaborate and not try for some heroics and that I know it best. So the first thing you need is a culture change. But secondly, you also need to invest in the technology. This is not as easy as just buying it. You have to evaluate the options, what are best for your situation. You really got to test it. Security, data security, especially when you go to the three and 3.5 solutions where data is being transmitted, we need to look at security. Then you need to buy the hardware and software. You need to train people on it. You need to maintain it and update it. So there's quite some investment that goes into it. But there's also a fourth party we've noticed uh, that out there, and this is your asset owners. There are often quite a lot of barriers still out there that inhibit the usage of these new tools. And also, Clients that need to appreciate the value that these tools bring and not just go for the lowest man hour rate because uh, you might be saving all the travel costs and everything, but if you then evaluate it on man hour rates, uh, it becomes a difficult story. But we are certain that if all these four elements work together, then the benefits, enhancing safety, reducing cost, executing faster, improving quality, and enabling work despite the whole COVID-19 going on are absolutely there. So with that, uh, looking a little at the time here, uh, I'd like to conclude the, my, the, my part of the webinar and uh, Ferry, what questions have we been able to get in? Yeah, well, uh, thanks Martijn for this impressive uh, overview of all possibilities of remote collaboration. And uh, well, I think the benefits speak for themselves and our large audience put so many questions in the Q&A uh, <laughs> button that we can't uh, answer them all. So I will put forward only a few, uh, uh, let's say, questions to you. Uh, and then, uh, well, uh, the other questions that we can't answer in this webinar, we will answer, uh, let's say, uh, in writing or by contacting these people directly. Um, but, well, I think one of the first things that we uh, that is asked for is what are typical client pushbacks for using these tools? Can you elaborate on that briefly? Because then we have time for one or two more questions. <laughs> yeah. yeah, certainly. <laughs> now, uh, we even maintain a little list of uh, barriers uh, that uh, people are uh, putting forward. Uh, for example, uh, uh, we have a policy in place that thou shalt not use video. Personally, we believe this uh, typically uh, stems from the previous century, but these policies are there. And as long as the policies are there, they have to be upheld. Um, others say, we are afraid that the signals might interfere with your uh, communication systems, with their uh, internal communication systems and the uh, process control. Um, others say, well, if you can call others, then you can be called and that might distract you. Um, but it's quite a long list, but we found out that if we really sit down with the right people in the client for the organization and have a constructive dialogue, many of these barriers, if not all, can be taken away. Uh, take, for example, the, the, the interference of signals. Uh, typically, all process critical signals are transferred via hard wire. So it's very difficult for any cellular device to interfere with that. So again, yeah. sitting, and there are a lot of barriers, but quite often they're more a figment of our mind than true barriers. Uh, well, well uh, I think it's good to, uh, to link to this answer uh, one of the first questions that came in, and that was about security, because security is a challenge in many industries. And uh, this question uh, is about how the data is transmitted. Uh, is that on a planned system or cell towers? Have you? Uh, got any security issues with customers yet uh, is asked. Can you tell in one minute a little more about that? No, this is absolutely something that uh, needs to be evaluated very uh, uh, securely. <laughs> uh, there are some very good software applications like LibreStream who really taken security uh, very seriously. 
and uh, they encrypt everything that goes uh, via the that's transmitted. So uh, this is definitely something that we take into account. Uh, but also, if you're using WebEx, uh, uh, it's just we just evaluate it by case by case what information is being transferred, and make certain that uh, we have a fit for uh, purpose solution for that. But absolutely, it's one of the things on the checklist that needs to be reviewed. That's one of the one of the major issues. I think there are more questions about this. Uh, one last question: uh, Can we use these mechanisms for commissioning a new facility? I think that's obvious, but maybe you can answer it. <laughs> No, absolutely. I think, again, the, the, these use cases I presented were just uh, within the time constraints of uh, the half an hour. Uh, there are so many uses if you open your eyes to these opportunities and simply say, hey, can we do this remotely? And often the answer is yes. Uh, so it does take, again, investment, people to understand who to contact when, uh, and some barriers to be taken away if uh, you're not allowed to use video. But absolutely commissioning of new plants, uh, brownfield, uh, modifications, revamps, it should all be possible. Clear. Okay. Well, uh, I think there's much more to tell about it. And, and well, the questions demonstrate that. So uh, we will be definitely giving a follow-up on this, uh, on this webinar, webinar. But now uh, we are reaching the 30-minute mark. So I am going to conclude this webinar about remote collaboration. Hopefully, you have gained some new insights that can help you in your daily business. If you have different use cases that you'd like to share with us, please send us a note. We love getting our minds stretched as well, and we might be able to extend this range of uh, remote collaboration solutions. Also, if you want to have more details on the things that we have shared, and I saw you want, then leave us a message and we will contact you. We will leave the presentation open for a few more minutes, so you have time to give uh, more questions or remarks. As mentioned before, this webinar is part of a series of Wednesday webinars about smart maintenance and asset management related topics. Next Wednesday, at the same time, we will talk about preserving and start up of idle production facilities, a current theme these days. More information and registration, again, via stork.com. This presentation and the recorded webinar will be available on the Stork website. Some of the questions were about that. You will receive an email next Monday with a link to, let's say, this uh, location on the Stork website. Thanks again for your participation. Stay safe and know that we are your partner in the field of asset performance improvement. Stork is there to help you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.